Digital transformation has been reshaping our lives since the late 90s. It's not by chance that we call kids born after year 2000 digital natives. Nonetheless, we are realizing the actual impact on most sectors of the economy and its potential for future economic growth only now, during the pandemic caused by COVID-19. The pandemic has made all people aware of the importance of digital tools in allowing life to continue during the long lockdown that characterized 2020 and the first semester of 2021 in most parts of the world. And it has given us a clear idea of the relevance of digital transformation to our lives in the future, which will increasingly be a combination of the physical and the digital. Europe embraced this direction with the Next Generation EU Fund, a financial tool that aims to support all the member states to finalize, among the other things, digital transformation. But why is digital transformation so important? What do we have to do now to envision a successful digital transformation of the economy? And how will our lives be transformed after 2026, the year when the next generation EU reaches its conclusion? Digital transformation is a slow process that originated with the diffusion of the World Wide Web made available to everyone in 1993. From then on, a series of crucial developments and innovations related to the miniaturization of computing devices has opened the door to a brand new industrial revolution. An example, think about the first smartphones launched in 2007 or the increasing capacity of data storage that move the small and big data containing our devices onto the clouds. Industrial revolutions are socio-economic technological events that occur rarely in the history of humankind and have a fundamental impact on our evolution. As happened in the late 19th and early 20th century, when electricity enabled the creation of the first manufacturing factories and the related corporations with a global scale and scope, Digital tools can now be used to redesign core industrial processes with each sectors of the economy and to rethink transactions in the global village. Big and small data are in fact a new form of electricity that transmits intelligence to machine and empowers connections between industries and society. From Australia to North America and from the production of raw materials to the distribution of consumer goods, data represents the new fuel to move the global economy. Before 2020, this force was already silently at work. Its presence was evident in some economic processes like retailing, slowly converted to e-commerce, in industries like books, consumer electronics, and more recently, fashion apparel and casual wear. More prominently, we saw its impact with the disruption of the media industry, with the music sector being revolutionized by the advent of players like Napster in 1999, Spotify in 2008, and Apple Music in 2015. Or the newspaper industry, with the transformation of traditional newspapers like the New York Times or the Financial Times into new powerful media platforms. More broadly, we saw its impact with social networks like American WhatsApp and Tinder and Chinese TikTok that were conquering bigger portion of our share of mind day by day. And the multinationals behind the acronym FANG, dominating the market value cap before the pandemic and substituting historical players in the oil and auto industries were an empirical demonstration of the industrial revolution already taking place before 2020. However, Core inertial forces were also at work to slow down the pace of change in most industries and most parts of the world. In fact, it is not simple to digitize the economy without clear incentives that change the behavior of organizations and individuals. Think about the education sector. Teachers at schools and professors at universities are used to teaching with a physical classroom with a chalk on a blackboard in a one-to-many mode with dedicated paper material. Banks are used to protecting our savings, but in order to do most transactions, they are their customers to go visit their physical branches to present the details of contracts and sign them. Major Hollywood studios have always asked their customers to go to movie theaters for the premiere of their films. 
and all employers require employees to clock into the office every single morning. But the pandemic, with its massive lockdown, forced people in every corner of the world to portray the importance of digital transformation and to deep dive into it. We purchase more and more consumable and durable goods via e-commerce. We got even used to buying food online. We engage massively in smart working. Up until the pandemic, only small percentages of corporations who experimented with smart working. Regarding teachers and students, we did classes online and we got used to meeting with family and friends online. New social networks like Clubhouse and platforms like Zoom, Teams, WebEx, BlueJeans and others have become part of our everyday life, opening up new scenarios for our future, which will be even more a blend of the physical and the digital. And although we have been speaking for some years about open innovation, the pandemic forced us to share life science data massively to reduce the production time of a brand new vaccine from eight years to 10 months. This is what happened with the Pfizer, Moderna, and AstraZeneca vaccines, among the others. The EU has reacted proactively, making digital transformation one of the two major pillars, along with sustainability, of the next generation EU fund, with a substantial investment. To understand the impact of the plan and better understand how digital transformation will improve Europe in the years to come, we can ask Vittorio Colau. Vittorio Colau, former CEO at Vodafone Group, is currently the Minister of Technological Innovation and Digital Transformation in the Italian government chaired by Mario Draghi, former president of the European Central Bank. Vittorio has contributed conceiving the Italian recovery plan, which puts digital transformation at the center of the agenda. Vittorio, what are the critical actions that will allow the finalization of the digital transformation in Europe? I see three important pillars uh, for the digital transformation in Europe. The first one is everything which will uh, uh, enable the creation of a true European cloud. Uh, cloud is important for our innovation. We need to have cybersecurity structures and uh, uh, protection systems enabled at European level. We need to be sure that the cloud infrastructure itself uh, is interoperable across Europe and is strong uh, and is allows the growth of players in the private sector. And uh, Gaia X uh, is clearly one uh, of the great engines for this transformation. So cloud in Europe is clearly important. The second is. Uh, the set of actions which are uh, uh, included in the Digital Compass 2030. Digital Compass is the European plan to bring uh, uh, cloud services to life, to uh, have connectivity, very high capacity network connectivity everywhere, to bring digital identity. There's a big uh, effort now in digital identity uh, to become a reality for European citizens and therefore access to all uh, services through uh, this digital identity and improvement of the skills of our citizens, of people who work in companies to enable the use of all these uh, features. And then the third one is the one which is dearest to me is uh, the great effort that Europe is continuing and is stepping up in the STEM and in the competence area, research, skills, doctorates, cooperation, innovation hubs, everything that leverages on the human capital of Europe. And this is very dear to me uh, because Europe, uh, since my days of Erasmus and Bocconi, has started investing in this kind of great uh, pool of human capital that we have. And of course, uh, uh, bring, bringing that to the next level, to the development level, not just the research level, is going to be crucial in the coming years. Vittorio, how do you see life after 2026, the completion of the next generation EU fund? Life in Europe uh, after uh, 2026 should be better than uh, what uh, uh, it has traditionally been. Uh, Europe has always been uh, a very appealing territory. Uh, we have uh, wonderful beauty, we have art, we have culture, we have uh, proximity. It's, it's already naturally a place that attracts uh, a lot of people. Uh, after 2026, if we are successful with, the, uh, I would say, the two transitions, the environmental transition and the digital transition, 
Europe can add to this natural uh, appeal also the appeal of being one of the most environmental friendly uh, and uh, most environmental sensitive uh, territories in the world, pushing development and technology into uh, you know, sustainability and uh, the possibility to sustain for the long term the, uh, the, the attractiveness and the balance of the ecosystem in Europe, but also uh, a place uh, where digital uh, enables easier lives for citizens, for tourists, for visitors, for everybody, so that we can really uh, live well, connect more and also uh, internationally uh, work, travel, retire. So if you put, uh, if you want the traditional appeal together, after 2026, we could be a beautiful, attractive place, a very sustainable place and a highly connected, highly efficient, easy to live place. And this is uh, what the uh, next gen EU plan should really aim for. This is all very interesting and very promising. Thank you, Minister Colau. We have to aim to a more sustainable and more connected Europe after 2026. And for this goal, three fundamental pillars will be crucial. A true European cloud, protected and interoperable, pursuing the Digital Compass 2030, and training current and future generation with more STEM. Digital transformation has been reshaping our lives since year 1993 when the internet appeared on the first desk of computers. But it is particularly now, with the new millennium, that the digital revolution started. From the viewpoint of citizens and consumers, our life has been literally transformed, and the pandemic has further boosted this transformation. Nonetheless, from the supply side, there's still a long journey to travel. Modern corporations have been conceived during the Industrial Revolution of electricity and still require much changes across most sectors of the economy. And before the pandemic, it was particularly the US and China that were populated by digital giants able to boost digital transformation, with Europe playing instead in defense with important regulations like the data protection regulation, but with limited innovations in corporations and institutions. With the next generation EU plan, Europe is now taking the lead on digital transformation. As they say, the devil is in the detail of the execution of important plans like Next Generation EU. But for sure, we have now a crucial platform to boost digital technology in our society and improve our future lives.